views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm speaking to you today from uh, partly sunny partly cloudy seattle here at hubbard radio on kknw am 1150 boy i almost got that wrong Whoa. after how many years that's so <laughs> funny pick it up uh, you might be listening on the East Coast on um, WBLQ AM 1230 in Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, somewhere across the United States on cable radio network through your televisions, or perhaps anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio. I know we have listeners from over 65 countries, at least the ones accessing the archives. And live, it's probably even more than that. So wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for joining us here today. We're doing this show because of you. And I'm so grateful you're going to be here, and I think you're going to be grateful you're, you're tuning in as well, because we have a very exciting guest, um, a guest with depth and a one, one phrase question that can really change your life. And I've also got an exciting announcement at the end of the show, but before we get into that, I want to say hello to my better half here in the studio who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Hi, Benny. Hi, and uh, happy Good Friday to you. Uh, to you as well. Thank you. And Easter, any plans? Um, yes, plans with my kids. Yes, oh, yay! Yes, and um, the Easter Bunny will come. Of course. And, yes. Wouldn't yes. skip out on anything. Absolutely. Or hop away or anything. And, you know, you want it. there's traditional foods, you know, breakfast and the dinner and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And Yeah, we're going to go do the uh, photo op. We're going to find uh, oh, him, the Easter Bunny, later today. Oh, that's exciting. Yep. Those... we got to get the boys all ready for that. So. Yeah, I've got some of those pictures from when my boys were little and, you know, they're you don't miss the opportunity because it, they're they're cute, and then someday they'll be teenagers. You're you're going to be teenagers. Right. They'll say, "Dad, why did you make us stand next to that bunny?" Well, it's funny how you uh, brought that up really fast. So my my kids were actually on. Do you know who Queen Latifah is? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. So she had a TV show for a little stint, you know, a couple of years, and it's uh-huh. no longer on the air. So uh, my uh, the boy's mom, Lindsay, she. Uh, had a blog and posted a, the boy's picture. And it was one of the ones where like, you know, it didn't work out so well with right. Easter Bunny. Right. They still got the picture and it was probably one of the best pictures ever. Uh, but this is the the year after that though. They were just perfect little gentlemen. They were all, we're all streamlined. You know, we're all wearing this, the right thing. Right. We actually ended up being on her show because a producer from her show saw Lindsay's blog in the picture. Uh huh. So it's still recorded on our DVR from like two years ago That's of, of that Easter. Yeah. Of the Easter show she did. And so, they didn't tell me about it. She saved the show. I'm like, why are you having this show saved on the DVR? Like, I don't watch Queen Latifah. I mean, I love her. I just uh-huh. don't watch the right, show. Right. And it's daytime TV. And so I just, you know, I'll catch it another day. And she's like, no, you have to watch this. So we did. And it popped up. And I literally hit oh the floor. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea that this the photo was submitted in. And, of course, Queen was like, now look at that little happy couple right there. I put them on my refrigerator. I'm like, hey, you hear that? I'm going to give you a Queen Latifah's refrigerator. It's pretty that's cool. That's so cute. Yeah, it's a good little story. Yeah, that's a great story. Yes, and, you know, spring has sprung. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, everything's blooming around here, which yep. is wonderful. Yep. And I know for those of you who are listening in the southern hemisphere, it's a whole different ball game. You're starting to cool off, and you're, you're looking towards autumn and, and winter. Ah, they probably need it anyways. Yeah, I bet 90s they 90s all the time. Who yeah, needs that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm really excited about my guest today because um, I, I, I just love it when somebody can take something as complex as psycho-spiritual development and turn it into something very simple. Because it actually, the, the simpler something is, sometimes the more powerful it is. And the woman I'm talking about is named Aura Nadrich. Now, she's a certified life coach. 
She's a mindfulness meditation coach, and she's the author of this book, Says Who? How One Simple Question Can Change the Way You Think Forever. Her teachings are basically helping us to confront our inner negativity head on and address what the issues are behind the negativity that are keep, that's keeping us stuck. Um, she was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, which may explain the interesting name Ora Nadrich. I love that. And she, but she was raised in L.A., and, you know, she she grew up watching her mother, um, who had a successful domestic employment agency, and she saw that her mother was helping other people. And eventually she went into um, English, English and psychology. And then after college, she went into the entertainment industry, which is kind of an interesting story. But anyway, she ended up shifting, and now she's working as a life coach. She helps with meditation and with this wonderful book, I'd like to welcome our guest today, Aura Nadrich. Hi there, Aura. Welcome to the Christine Upchurch Show. Hi, Christine. Thank you for having me. You know, I just love what Marianne Williamson says about you. Oh, uh, this, is, you. this is a great quote. Aura Nadrich is a treasure. Her voice bears the passion of her own experience. She's able to reach deep into our hearts because she's called so much wisdom from her own. When she speaks, I listen. When she writes, I read it. When she gives advice, I heed it. Her sparkle and power are not to be missed. Wow. Marianne Williamson said that. That, that is quite the testimonial. Yeah, I know, right? It yeah. was unbelievable when I saw that. I was, oh, my goodness, Marianne. That is so exquisite. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, or uh, each of us, everybody listening, each, you know, each person who's on their spiritual journey, so to speak, our psychological journey, each of us has a story to say how we got from where we once were to where we're at now. And you've gone through some interesting changes in your life. Can you just share with our listeners briefly a little bit about your history and how you came to be um, a meditation teacher and a life coach? You know, I really think back to my past, and I've I've thought about this many times. You know, we, we look back to our past trajectories and you know, who we were and who we are today and how that that path that we've been on, you know, sometimes people start on one path and they end up somewhere so different. And in many yeah. ways, even though I've had different careers, if you will, as you said, I was an actress and I was also a screenwriter. Basically, what I was doing from very early on is that I was very inclined to help people. I was uh-huh. like that even as a child. I felt that I was very compassionate, very caring, uh, really very much wanted to have, you know, help people feel better. Right. So I really was that girl. I was also very inquisitive. I was uh, a seeker even early on. I was a deep thinker. So, you know, you look back to who you were even in a, at a young age, and it doesn't surprise me that this was the culmination of who I was and what I chose to do today. Uh-huh. But it does seem like a bit of a, a leap from the entertainment industry to well, um, yes. to author <laughs> and, and teacher and life coach. Yes, definitely. You know, it is that. But even as an actress, you know, you go into any field, any profession, and you, you have an, an intention behind it. You know, why do we do what we do? Why do we pick doing the things that we decide to do? Right. And even as an actress, you know, I love the idea of, of touching people, of lifting their spirits, of having them connect to their hearts, to feel things. You know, there's nothing more powerful than storytelling. Mm-hmm. And to be able to be an actress to do that, I really was inspired by that, knowing that by playing a character, you could move people. And then taking that into screenwriting, again, storytelling. Uh-huh. So it really was sort of this continuum of wanting to reach people, wanting to touch their hearts, wanting to help them connect to the emotions that we all feel. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm fascinated by the title of your book. And, you know, once I began reading it, 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 it makes sense. But it's simply two words. It says who with a question mark. What brought you to the power of that phrase? Well, starting again back years ago, in, in, you know, earlier in my life, I had an incident that occurred, a family incident that was quite devastating, and I went into a deep fight-or-flight state. 
Mm-hmm. And when that happened to me, as we you know, when we go into a fear mode or fight and flight, thoughts rush to the foreground of our minds. Oh, my God, I'm not going to be okay. And all mm-hmm. the things that we tell ourselves <clears throat> because we're so frightened about our survival. And that happened to me. And as, as a result of that, one thought in particular came very strongly to my mind, and it took hold in my mind. Uh-huh. And I didn't know how strong of an effect it had had on my life until, you know, as the years progressed, I started to feel anxiety and I started to feel this like, you know, low grade level of fear that was just always around and I couldn't shake off. And it took, you know, I went on a deep psycho spiritual journey Mm -hmm. to find out what this was all about. And I did. I was able to confront it. I was able to find out what it was and why it had a deep hold on me. Fast forward to many years later, when I became a life coach, I started to see clients, and I would see something similar in my clients, in, in some of them in particular, where they would have a thought that that had took hold for them and that they had carried around for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I had one client in particular who had come to me, and she was a creative woman, and she was starting a new business. And she was sharing this idea with me, which was really a wonderful idea. And while she was explaining it to me, out of the blue, she blurts out, you know, I'm really afraid that I'm going to be homeless and destitute and penniless. And I, I was, like, amazed by this. It was completely diametrically opposed to this this whole movement in her of wanting to create this business. So I felt like I was in the presence of somebody with two minds, Mm -hmm. you know, and what came up for me immediately? I mean, first of all, I identified it. I thought, oh, I know that. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know that. I know that feeling of having a thought take you over, a strong negative or fear-based thought. So it was very familiar to me, even though her thought was so different than one that I had had years prior. But when she said that, What came up immediately for me was, I don't believe that that's her original thought. I Mm -hmm. think she's heard that somewhere, probably somewhere in her childhood. And what I said to her is, says who? Uh Who is saying you're going to be homeless and destitute and penniless? And that just completely stopped her in her track. Uh Because she had never been asked that before. Right, right. So you you were asking who was behind that fear. Who is saying that thought in your mind? Is mm-hmm. that your thought, or have you heard that said some, you know, somewhere else or by someone else? Interesting. Which, in fact, she did. Mm-hmm. And We're... what she had explained to me was that this was something her father used to say when she was growing up a lot, because he went from job to job. They didn't have money. They had you know tremendous difficulty. It was very erratic, and mm-hmm. she would be petrified by that as a child. Right. So that's something she adopted in her thinking that was really started with her father. Mm-hmm. We need to go to another quick, I mean, to a quick break, but um, when we return, or I'm going to have you talk more about this phrase and how we can apply it in our own lives to break through our negativity. More with Aura Nadrich in, um, in just a few moments. Access Consciousness is coming back to Seattle this April for three amazing events. Mark your calendars. April 20th through the 22nd is the Access Consciousness Body Classes, created by Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here, facilitated by Dr. Glenna Rice. Explore verbal processes and hands-on body work that will unlock the tension, resistance, and dis-ease of the body by shifting energy dynamically. April 23rd through the 25th is the Advanced Access Body Class with Gary Douglas. What if you could undo a whole lot of limitations that you have locked into your body and create an alteration of the way your body functions? Then, on April 26th at 7 p.m., join Gary Douglas for the Abuse Hold class. This is the first time ever that this dynamic process is being presented in a class format. Find out more about these Access Consciousness April events in Seattle by visiting transformation.events. That's transformation.events. 
Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side, off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skincare excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. That's SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. Or call 206-229-0086. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk radio. This is Peggy Snow, practitioner at Stellar Reflections, with a Stellar Reflections Minute. So many people these days are trying to find ways to relieve their stress. What happens to our breathing when we're feeling overwhelmed and stress? When we tune in, we realize that we're either holding our breath or taking very shallow breath. To signal the body that all is well, which most of the time it is, sometimes all that is needed is a nice, deep breath to break the cycle. First, exhale to get all the stale air out by engaging the abdominal muscles and blowing gently. Next, take a nice full breath in, feeling it fill your body all the way down to your hips. Release fully and enjoy the freedom of movement. Notice how your body feels. Do you feel refreshed? Calmness is only a breath away. This has been a Stellar Reflections Minute. For more information about what we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. She says I'm walking in a straight line. That's not really her style. And they all got the same heartbeat. Hers has fallen behind. In this world. Welcome back to the Christian Eptor Show here on KKNW, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a conversation today with Aura Nadrich, who is a life coach and a meditation teacher and an, au- an author of a book entitled Says Who? How One Simple Question Can Change the Way You Think Forever. So, or you before the break, you shared the story with you know one of your your life coach clients and and that phrase you know says who came out of out of your mouth and and it helped change the situation. Why is it we need to be exploring our belief system and our our negative thoughts? Well, I think that you know negative thinking is a, a natural part of the thinking process, and says who isn't a book about oh let's just think positive thoughts and positive thoughts will keep happening, right. although I subscribe to that, that's not realistic. Uh-huh. So negativity will come up, you know, it's just inevitable. So the book really is about what do you do when that happens, you mm-hmm. know, I, because we just know that that will, unless we have some kind of a questioning method, I feel, which is what says who is about in place, to question our negative thoughts, yeah. then we just accept them readily. Uh-huh. We just, you know, it's amazing. You know, we think somewhere between, you know, supposedly 40 to 70 thoughts a day. I mean, that's just, you know, incredible. And when you think that, you know, many of those thoughts don't serve our well-being, mm-hmm. they don't support us, they don't bring out the best in us, they don't really, you know, advocate for us being, you know, positive consistently. Right. So unless you have some kind of a, I believe, something in, in place to question them, you're going to accept them. Yeah. And I feel that our thoughts, our negative thoughts and our fear-based thoughts want to tell us something. So and, if but you want or, to find you know, out... I, I think that there are a lot of people out there or who believe that 
if they're spiritual enough, they can just sort of transcend it, transcend it a- as opposed to like actually dealing with it. Why is it important for us to be in dialogue with it, to, to be observing it and dealing with it? Well, you know, it's such a personal, you know, experience with how you deal with your thoughts and how you deal with your beliefs. You know, it's not for me to say that if somebody feels they can have some kind of an instantaneous transcendent experience with it, you know, and it works for them, that's great. I personally feel that the questioning, we have deep-seated beliefs that we've been carrying around for a very long time, Uh do you know, and sometimes they don't really apply to the moment that you're in right now. You know, mindfulness is about being in the present moment with total awareness right now. Right. So you don't really realize that sometimes a lot of your beliefs are old and tired, and they don't really hold up to today. Uh-huh. And, you know, having a having a check-in with yourself as to, you know, because we're quick to say things, and we're quick to believe things, and we're quick to think things that don't really serve us well, and they don't serve our dynamics well. Right. And I think that um, for many people... They really can't transcend it in the moment, and they just sort of wish they could. It's kind of like the spiritual frosting that they paint on it, um, as opposed to actually dealing with it. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, it's very easy to push things aside uh-huh. and push thoughts down and push them away. And I feel, why not find out what they're about, you know? Right. Why not know what your beliefs are or your judgments are uh-huh. or your negativity thoughts are? or your, what your fear is about, you know, why not discover what it is? And it might not be such a big boogeyman after all, and it uh-huh. might not be as horrible as you think it is. So what is the process? You know, I, I understand being aware of the negative thoughts and um, sort of having this, this sense of wanting to explore it. What's the process that you put into place to help people to work through them? Well, first and foremost, what I suggest, and I go into explanation in the book, is to be an observer of your thoughts. Uh-huh. You know, we're very quick to react to our thoughts, and that's usually what ends up happening. So being angry and irritated and, you know, all the things that come out of us emotionally, well, those are linked to thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, our emotions are always linked to something that we're thinking. So when you find yourself really plugged in or at the effect of a negative or fear-based thought, Go into observation mode as if you were witnessing yourself. Uh And when you do that, you can catch yourself in the moment and go, hmm, gosh, I'm really plugged in right now. Let me just take a couple of breaths and Uh let me look at what is making me feel so angry or sad or scared or annoyed or any of that. And when you go into observation mode, that thought can be worked through more easily. Mm -hmm. You're already available to working with that thought to find out why you're so plugged in and why something feels so frightening and why something feels so threatening. Do you know like, oh, I'm scared that I'm going to fail at this. Uh Hmm, That's a thought. I'm going to fail at this. Well, the says who questions help you process that, helps you have a type of inquiry as to whether that belief about yourself, I'm going to fail at this, is even true or not. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So um, do you find that people typically have these thoughts sort of planted in their minds from young childhood, or does it vary? I think it varies, but I think that there is a definite high percentage of thoughts that we've carried over from childhood, Mm -hmm. and they start early. And I think when I, you know, I even do a, a says who mindfulness meditation technique with people, and I ask them, you know, to think of a thought that they've either been carrying around for a long time or something that's pressing on them or even something that came up for them, you know, riding in the car uh-huh. that day. So it varies with, with every person, but what I have found is that most people definitely have a thought which has turned into a belief uh-huh. that is negative that they carried around for a long time, something that was told to them when they were younger something that was told to them either by a parent or a teacher or an authority figure or a bully in school. Right. You know, it's like they go, yeah, I really remember when that was said to me and how horrible that made me feel and how horrible that made me feel about myself and that I still carried some of that belief over till today. So if, if it goes from a thought to a belief, how do you unravel that belief? Well, you know, the says two questions, these are seven 
very, you know, I think essential questions to ask ourselves. Again, you know, setting it up with being the observer, uh-huh. you know, letting that thought come up and then realizing that, you know, what you do is you catch those thoughts more quickly and you can catch a thought of judgment. You can you can walk into a situation and immediately judge somebody sure. because of the way they look or, you know, what they do or the color of their skin, uh-huh. you know, and you... It, if by doing the says who method and becoming more mindful of your thoughts, you can catch yourself and go, "Woo, wait, I've been carrying around that belief for quite a long time. That's judgmental. Right. You know, I'm judging others harshly. Is, is that my original belief or did I grow up hearing that? Did I have a parent that was very judgmental? Do you know? You know, mm-hmm. it's interesting how you can start to connect the dots. Right. I believe that a lot of that is learned behavior judgment, prejudice, hatred, racism, sure. you know, that's learned. That We learned that long ago. Mm-hmm. And how exciting if we can retrain ourselves and unlearn After, some of these things. Right. Or, re, re, or what I have also in the book called release and replace. Mm-hmm. How about, you know, releasing that thought and replacing it with something else today? Right. Or do you really feel that you're still that same person that wants to hold on to those same beliefs? Maybe you do. I don't know. That's, uh-huh. that's part of the inquiry, to find out really what you believe and what you stand for. And we're going to learn more about Orin Adrich's process uh, based on her book, Says Who, when we return here in a few moments. What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Pat. Many of you have heard me talk about the Lyme disease epidemic going on right now in the world. I want to tell you about my friends at Results RNA. They have now created an entire Lyme support system for immune system support, detoxification, rejuvenation, and neurological healing. Please visit ResultsRNA.com to learn more. And for first-time orders, you'll receive a special 10% discount. All you have to do is type in Dr. Pat at checkout. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. For centuries, spiritual traditions have talked about how humans have an energy field, or aura, surrounding them. Although skeptical scientists refuted this for decades, science is now beginning to catch up with spirituality. Scientists can actually measure light emanating from living beings, so they can measure the human aura, which in scientific terms is known as the biofield. Many medical practitioners around the world use an instrument to evaluate a patient's biofield for the purpose of diagnosing illness. They understand that imbalanced or insufficient light in a person's energy field indicates a physical or emotional problem. The good news? There are ways to balance and increase your light, resulting in greater well-being. For more information, please check out StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio.
Welcome back to the Christine Eptor Show here on KKNW, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm talking today to Ora Nadrich, author of Says Who? How One Simple Question Can Change the Way You Think Forever. Now, Ora, you've been talking about um, the importance of thought and getting to that place of observing and witnessing the negative thoughts and then sort of exploring. So can you share with our listeners a little bit more about the process to kind of shift things from where you've been, where you've been stuck, where that thought has been kind of like cemented into a belief, and how to go about shifting it? Well, you know, some of what we've been talking about, you know, the thoughts that we bring over, that carries over in, from our earlier days, from our childhood, you know, let's just even focus on that, if you will, because there's so many things that we were told when we were younger, like, you're stupid, uh-huh. you know, you're, you're, you're un- unable to do this, you're not good at this, you're not good at that, and so you carry that belief into childhood. Right. And I think there are a lot of people that could relate to that. Yeah. And oh, you go, absolutely. oh, I still remember what was said to me. And I actually had a client who was, uh, who felt stupid growing mm-hmm. up because he was told that in school and it really impacted his oh, life. Dear. And so he grew up feeling not very smart until mm-hmm. he had a series of aptitude tests to realize he actually had a high IQ yeah. and turned out to be a successful author. Wow. So unless, yeah, no, I mean, you know, there's so many stories. I'm sure you could go even through, you know, historical figures, you know. Um, Einstein. Stories, I, totally, or, or people that didn't talk till they were a certain age right. and that were thought to be probably all sorts of things. Sure. Or didn't, you know, crawl or walk or, or, or you know, whatever, didn't, you know, what they weren't developmentally ready to do, uh-huh. you know. I mean, who are we to say, you know, what do you have this chart, you know, if you don't do this by such and such a time, oh. does that mean you're stupid? And, and doesn't it make you crazy as a parent when your child yeah. doesn't meet those milestones and, and you know, right. neighbors or friends are kind of looking at you like, he hasn't crawled yet? I, exactly. <laughs> uh, completely. And you know that that makes you feel like, as a parent, of course, you, you're like, oh, what's wrong? Uh-huh. When, when most of the time there's nothing wrong. And imagine how children feel. I mean, how about kids that don't grow and, you know, they have a growth spurt. You know, you know, right. the kids that are like tiny and then all of a sudden you see them later and they're like six feet five. Uh-huh. So there's so many things that are carried over into adulthood. And I think a lot of those ideas, again, which were instilled in our minds that weren't originated with us, we've taken on as true and real. Mm-hmm. And you, can, you have an opportunity in your life today, you know, I say we upload and we update our computers. Uh-huh. We need to do that to our thinking mind. Yeah. <laughs> we have to re- really be able to go, hey, you know, I got to like refresh and reboot. Uh-huh. This doesn't apply to me anymore. And that's, I think, a lot of the times when we get triggered, we don't even know we're carrying around some of the stuff we're carrying around until we get triggered, which again is why it's good to go into observation mode allow that thought to come up, whatever that thought is, and start to work through it with the says who questions, which mm-hmm. there are seven of them. So what are the what are the seven questions? Well, the very first one is says who? Mm-hmm. Who is saying this thought in my mind? And I think by starting with that first question is to be able to identify that it is in fact you that is saying it and you're owning that you're saying that to yourself. You're okay. admitting it to yourself. You're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm calling myself an idiot. Okay. The second question being, have you heard this thought said by someone else? Mm-hmm. Which is really important because it, what it does is based on everything we've been talking about, for a lot of people, they realize that that thought didn't originate with them. Mm-hmm. So even if you're calling yourself an idiot, who is saying this thought in my mind? Have I heard this said before? That's very important because what that does is it connects you to when you first heard it. Right. And that's very powerful for a lot of people. I've worked with clients where that's very been very powerful for them, like the client who I worked with who said what she said to me in that session only to realize she had been carrying around her father's fear-based thought for most of her adult life. And that was very powerful for her and very emotional. Uh-huh. She cried. Right. You know, so you suddenly start to recognize that this thought didn't originate with me. 
and I've been carrying this thought, which is very negative and very demeaning and very diminishing, mm-hmm. to who I am for most of my life. And that's a very powerful revelation and realization. So third question is, do I like this thought? That's uh-huh. one of my favorites. Right. So simple. You said earlier in the introduction about simplicity. I, I'm very in favor of simple wisdom. Uh-huh. These questions are very straightforward and very simple and very logical. And when you ask yourself, and I've been in many situations with clients. I had a women's group for several years. I had a woman that was you know, what I call in the book, she was on a hamster wheel of a negative thought. Uh It was a negative thought that she heard her mother say. It was a negative thought that she heard her grandmother say. And she was, you know, going on that loop. And she was like, yeah, but, yeah, but, Uh you know, I call it the yeah, but. Right. And I said to her in that moment, I said, do you like that thought? And again, it just stops you in your track Uh because it's so logical. And she went, no, I don't <laughs> like this thought. As a matter of fact, she goes, I hate it. I hate that thought. Interesting. So you're thinking of thought that you not only don't like, you actually hate. Uh-huh. The next thought, the next question being, does this thought make you feel better? Right. Okay. Well, can we say that our negative and fear-based thoughts make us feel better? No, they don't. No, no. They don't make us feel better at all. They make us feel really, really bad about ourselves. And for some people, it just is torturing for them, mm-hmm. the thoughts that they carry around. Right. That makes them feel that they are so worthless, so unlovable, so many things that are just so damaging to your self-esteem. Sure. So you start to begin to see how these thoughts just chip away and tear at, weigh at who you are, the fiber, the essence of who you really are, and they do need to be changed. Uh So what's the next question? The next question, does this thought work for you? Again, uh, I don't think so. If it's really tearing you down and making you feel horrible, if you think that negative and fear-based thought is working for you, then why don't you write it down as to how it's working for you. Uh-huh. Like if something that negative and that fearful is working for you, you really need to find out how. And if it's not, how is it not working for you? I think uh-huh. you can come up with a lot of ways that, that negative thought is not serving your well-being. Well, what came to mind just now is I know that there's some people who've been in relationships that have been, you know, bad and, and have, they've, they've gotten very hurt. So the the negative thought is like say you know all men are bad or what you know all all women care about yeah. themselves whatever. Um, so there are probably some people who can get to that point and think, yeah, it's serving me well because it's keeping me safe. That's a good, really good point, Christine. And I think that even what you just said, all men are bad, uh-huh. that becomes a belief. So we take an experience because you know a lot of what I go into the book is that. Those, uh, some of those negative thoughts also come from negative experiences that we've had, uh-huh. and that turns into a belief. So you've had a bad experience in a relationship. You've had a terrible divorce. You've had you know, a horrible re- experience in a job. You start to identify it by giving it this sort of overview of, oh, I never want to get married again because marriage is horrible. Mm-hmm. That becomes your belief. That experience becomes a belief. And that's really what starts to happen. So those are, re- those are the reasons why we make the choices that we make in our life based on a negative experience and our negative thoughts around that experience. But which don't, then don't people belief. think, sorry, but don't people think sometimes that those negative beliefs keep them safe from getting hurt? Yeah, absolutely. I cite that in the book. I talk about a client who grew up with a uh, parent that uh, had a horrible marriage grew up seeing so much fighting, and uh-huh. um, it was just horrible for her, and she never, she hasn't gotten married. Right. She's, you know, she's protecting herself. When you say keeping it safe for you, she won't even give it a, a chance uh-huh. because she's so convinced that her, if she were to get married, it's going to be exactly like what she grew up seeing. Uh-huh. Talk about it. Says who? Yeah. Says who? You know, because you saw that growing up, you 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 know, that's a very powerful belief. Yeah, it is. That was your parents' marriage. That doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. And people make choices based on that. Mm-hmm. Again, if that, if that works for you, go for it. Right. 
Okay, what's the next question? Well, the final question, after you've processed all those and you can answer them very honestly, is do I, well, no, it's not the final question. I'm sorry, the, the, the question before the final question is, am I in control of this thought? Well, again, you know, negative thoughts and fear-based thoughts can wreak havoc with us and they can control us like crazy or feel like they're controlling us. What's interesting about that is that we're creating the thought. Uh-huh. If there's not some other person in there, it's us. We're creating this thought that we suddenly feel has control over us, mm-hmm. not realizing that we can change that thought, that we are the ones that have control over it, right. you know? Right. So knowing and recognizing that, yeah, I really feel like this thought has controlled me for a very long time. I feel like a hostage to that thought. Uh-huh. And the final well, question. Hold, hold that thought. Oh, go because ahead. We're, we're going to talk about the final question after we go to a quick break, but more with Ora Nadrich when we return here on The Christine Eptrich Show. Are you ready to tap into the healer within? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the real doctor is the source that lives within you, that heals within you minute by minute every day? The healer within is the innate intelligence of the human body. When we cut our hand with a piece of glass, we don't have to command the body to close the wound and grow new skin. It knows how to heal itself. We do have to nourish the skin by disinfecting it and remove the glass or it cannot heal. The innate healer relies upon us to assist in this healing process. Our role is to identify its needs, provide the substances required for the healing, and remove the obstacle. Contact us to achieve optimal health at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at MaryJaneMack.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. What does the word healing mean? Many think that healing merely means eliminating symptoms. However, based on my many years as a healer, I have a much broader perspective on the word. Healing can manifest in a variety of ways, including having physical problems resolved, becoming more emotionally centered, experiencing better relationships, gaining greater clarity, and feeling more spiritually connected. True healing always includes some level of transformation. Whatever form healing takes, there is one commonality, an improvement in quality of life. To me, the highest form of healing goes beyond aligning with wellness. It comes from recognizing our soul's voice and allowing it to speak through us. And in that sense, don't we all yearn to heal into our wholeness? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Hey everyone, meet my friends at the Maca team. The ancient Inca root vegetable Maca is known worldwide for its huge array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true Maca specialists, the Maca team is here to bring you the best Maca the Peruvian mountains has to offer. Yellow Maca, used to promote endurance, vitality, fertility, hormone health, and much more is on sale now. I love it. Visit themacateam.com to order yours now. Themacateam.com. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com.
Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm talking to Aura Nadrich. And Aura, before we get to that seventh and final question, mm-hmm. can you please share with our listeners how they can get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me. My, my website is auranadrich.com, and most of all my social media handles are my name, Aura Nadrich. Okay, so, uh, face, so O-R-A, is, the first O-R-A, name. O-R-A, N-N, like Nancy, A-D-R-I. Okay. And that's, like I said, for, for practically all of my social media um, handles and Facebook. I do have a Facebook page called Ask Aura or a Life Coach and Says Who. Uh-huh. I've got a few Facebook pages, but mostly just the Aura Nature, that's how you can reach me. And do you have any events coming up? I'm planning out my year. A lot's going on. I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to be doing um, some retreats on mindfulness. I'm I'm actually teaching a Mindfulness Matters series at this new beautiful meditation studio that opened up here in Los Angeles called The Den. Wonderful. I've already done my first. I'm doing four more, and uh, I'm going to be uh, creating a Says Who uh, facilitation uh, program. Oh, I'm wonderful. I'm super excited about that, yeah. So people don't have to make their way to you, or you don't have to find your way to them. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, this is a program that I'm starting. There's there's a lot of interest in it, and so it'll be probably the first one started here in Los Angeles and, uh-huh. then, and carry it over into an online program. Right, because online seems to be the, the wave of the future, the wave of yeah. the present. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You just reach, obviously reach so many more people. Absolutely. Awesome. And people are used to learning and, and growing so much through their Internet connection to others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Okay, so you've gone through the first several questions that you ask yourself that all begin with the the phrase says who. What is that final question that we need to ask ourselves about these negative thoughts? The final question is, do I want to let this thought go? Mm, Yeah. You know, that's a biggie because after doing all those six, really processing those six questions prior, you really are left with, you know the the truth of the of the the reality, if you will, of you know if it's really negative, you know I, I would think you're you're ready to let it go. Uh-huh. You're not wanting to keep holding that on and and having yourself feel all the things that those six questions ask you. Do you find that people feel like they're betraying their family, for instance, if they let go of one of these beliefs that they they you know, adopted from their, their family, you know, the first that's tribe? A, that's a great question. I've never been asked that before, and I think that's a real powerful question because, you know, we do have a lot of beliefs that we hold on to that's part of the family belief system uh-huh. and agreements that are made early on. And I'm a big believer and supporter of individuality, uh-huh. and, you know, I, I think that uh, we should be who we really are and that separate from even the people that we love. Sure, sure. You know, so that's something to ask oneself. You know, am I ready to let go of a belief that, that I've been carrying over as, as a link and part of the chain of many of those people in my family lineage that have thought those thoughts before me? Sure. And I don't, I don't think they serve my well-being or anybody else's well-being. Mm-hmm. That's how you change the world, you know. I think Absolutely. it starts with us. Yeah, I agree. You know? I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Do, do you find that people ever um, have find that the negative thought originates in a previous life? Oh, boy, Christine, you're throwing some really good questions <laughs> at me at the end of our show. Almost. Boy, that's a good one. Very interesting and very interesting to explore because if someone came to me and they said, you know, I feel I've been carrying this belief for lifetime. Uh-huh. You know, which can go into the conversation of karma right. and all of that. That's a great thing to process because uh-huh. even if you believe it or you can identify it as such and you can even identify or name or imagine what that lifetime was, you can ask yourself the questions of who you are today, who uh-huh. you are in this lifetime, and who you have been before. Right, right. And I've actually seen it in the Akashic Records where somebody will have including my own Akashic Records, where there's a belief system that, that sort of imprinted into the soul, if you will, and it's vibrationally carried forward. 
And so it's it's kind of like it has to be released from like from the the point of of death, so to speak, from that life. And it yeah, yeah. and it, it is complex and and vibrational, but it's it definitely can have its hold on our current life. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's a really interesting thing to to propose because you know in our lifetime, the lifetime that we are in right now, in this moment that exists right now. Uh-huh. The fact that we can be liberated, you know, the the yes. idea that we can be free and be liberated and be emancipated from that which is which has held us, you know, captive or hostage or caused us such tremendous suffering, uh-huh. you know, this this allows for that. This gives you the opportunity to be free. Yeah, and how exciting that is, is that? That's, yeah, exactly. And I think that so many of us are, you know, stuck in the jail cells of our beliefs and um, really. There are a lot of people who are yearning to be free. Mm -hmm. They are. And, you know, fear of the unknown and fear of being free is something that can come up and can be real for people. Uh You know, we fear is like, you know, that saying fear being frightened more of success than failure. You know, you can feel you can feel frightened of being free. Uh And, you know, there's that great Rumi saying, may you soar so high that you yourself you lose from view. Oh, wow. You know, which yeah. has always resonated for me so powerfully. That, yeah. you know, isn't it? It's just that we can fly so high. We can be so free. You know, I feel that that is so the spirit energy anyway. Uh-huh. We come into the world as these beautiful spirits, these, this true essence of beingness. Right. And that, you know, don't you want to experience that in your lifetime, this lifetime? Sure. Yeah. I don't want to have to wait another 100 or 2,000 lives or whatever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> now. Yes. Let's try this one on for size and see what that creates. What, a, what an amazing experience that can be. Absolutely. You know, or this hour has flown by. I've, I've really enjoyed my conversation with you. And I, I find your book to be both simple and very, very powerful. Again, I want to share with our listeners. It says who, how one simple question can change the way you think forever. Or thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, Christine, thank you so much for having me. I had such a good time. Oh, my pleasure. And I just want to share with our listeners that, um, sort of shift gears a bit, I'm starting a new blog series. It's funny because um, one night, a little past midnight, I all of a sudden had this download that there are all sorts of myths regarding spirituality. And I was being asked to take the task and to look at them one by one, the concepts that are out there about spirituality, and ask, is it true or is it not? So I've started a new blog series on my website, christineupchurch.com, and it's called The Top Ten Myths About Spirituality. And t- today's is the first one in, my, in the blog series, and I'm taking on a phrase that's often used about our spirituality, and I'm not going to tell you anything more than that, but I encourage you to look at christineupchurch.com, look at the blog page, and let me know what you think. Because, you know, I, I, I talk to so many people over the air, and occasionally we'll hear from people all over the world, which we love to hear from you guys. But in terms of the blog, I want to know what you're thinking. Does this, the fact that I'm saying this, that this particular phrase, and I'm not even going to tell you, you have to look at the blog, is it myth? Does it resonate with you? Um, have you bought into this myth and have you not expanded spiritually because of it? And so let me know what you think. And I'm really grateful that you joined us here today. And I hope that you have a fabulous week. I look forward to talking to you again sometime really soon. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.TransformationTalkRadio.com. Transformation Talk Radio.com.